Hello and welcome to Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. In fact, we are now sitting in the new state about to be formed of Telangana. And I can tell you, we've been traveling around here over the last few days. It's one of the most exciting and complicated elections I have ever covered. And most fascinating and could be the make or break election in this entire general election. Of course, they're having Lok Sabha elections and assembly elections together. So we'll be talking about both, but focusing mainly on the Lok Sabha. And where are we? We're at the Charminar, the beautiful Charminar. Unfortunately, it's not lit up like this every night, which I honestly believe it should be, because it's gorgeous and a symbol of the heart of India, where secularism, where the religions live together in harmony over centuries. We've got Dorab Pariwala, the one and only who's been traveling and dissected this state in and out. Just wait till you hear what he says. And we've got Uma Sudhir, who in my opinion is one of the finest journalists in India today. And she knows this state inside out. And of course, she's bullied every politician there is here. So we've talked to everybody that has to be talked to and who knows what's happening. So we're going to give you some opinion poll results as to what's going to happen. First, we'll go with Andhra. Remember, this used to be a state with 42 seats and it was dominated by the Congress, 33 out of the 42. If it loses a lot of that, the Congress is going to be in deep trouble. And the, will the BJP gain though? Well, let's have a look at our votes forecast this time for, this time for Andhra. This is Seem Andhra or Andhra, not Telangana, which is 25 out of those 42 seats. The TDP Plus has 43%. And, as far, and the main opponent to the TDP is the YSRC. The YSRC has got 42%. If we can have that come up, there we are, 42%. Just 1%, the gap is narrowing. The Congress is wiped out here completely just nine percent now 43 to 42 is just neck and neck which means the ysrc in the last two weeks remember we did a poll here uh, early april the gap was much wider it's now just one percent so uma can i ask you it's really a close fight here there's chandra babu naidu of the tdp and there's uh, Jagan Reddy of the YSRC, neck and neck. But Jagan Reddy has been fighting and fighting and fighting for the last so many years. And now, so many, well, four years, he says. And uh, Chandra Babu Naidu has got a bit of a boost by joining the BJP or allying with the BJP. Chandra Babu Naidu has been out of power now for 10 years. So he can't afford to be out of power one more time. And that's the reason why he needs to use every card that he can get and if it is a Narendra Modi card that's going to really swing that little, bring that little difference, he is going to do it. And that's the reason why Chandra Babu Naidu is fighting it tooth and nail. 2009, 2014, so much has changed in this state. We had one Georgia, dominant yeah. chief minister, that person is gone. There was Chiranjeevi with the Prajarajam who took away 16% of the vote share then. That, that party is now merged with the Congress party in Andhra Pradesh. We have TRS, which was hardly at 10 assembly seats and two Lok Sabha seats in Telangana, of course. But in, in the other side, of course, they never had a presence and they don't have a presence even now. And YSR Congress, a very new party that performed after YS Rajshekar Reddy's death. And, but he has been campaigning from day one of his party being formed. He has had this mass contact program. So you have these two players, very big players, so much at stake. And both of them... So much at stake. So exactly. much at stake. Dora, I mean, you followed Chandra Babu Naidu for 30 years. And in the last 10 years, as Uma was saying, total wilderness. But he's coming back. Yes, the question, the, the moot point at the end of the election will be that was his decision to ally with the BJP the right one or the wrong one? Right. Will it bring him to power or will he keep him out of power? And I think this is a very crucial decision for right. him. He hopes that it will because... 10 hours out of power in a regional party makes life very difficult years, to raise yeah. money, to motivate cadres. And he's hoping that he makes an impact this time. Okay, let's, uh, Dorab, if you can go through this graphic with me. Let's have a look at the swing since the last opinion poll. We are talking a swing of over two weeks only. 
but so much as dorab has always said two weeks is a long time in politics let's have a look at that swing graphic and you'll understand what's happened in the last two weeks it is absolutely amazing the change the swing against the tdp this is after the tdp joined the bjp in a, as an ally so when you're saying t against tdp plus that's tdp plus bjp is 3% and that's mainly because in the last two weeks ever since that alliance was cemented the muslim voters switched to ysrc now dora you had showed earlier that before there was an alliance before when tdp was fighting on its own there was some talk about uh, almost for the vote about 37% of yeah. muslims were voting for it yes that's now it's down to 10% yeah, of course he has done things for the muslim community in the past but obviously now this time you know there is a lot of division in terms of mr ovesi also telling people don't back him and i think they have a clear option in jagan so i think this is the what i was talking about the big dilemma of naidu has he won the bet or has he lost the bet because of the tie up so i want to ask you uh, uma this constituency for mr ovesi is meant to be the safest in the country you don't need a uh, sophisticated pollster like dorab so far but actually this is the kind of constituency likes to forecast <laughs> but here it's a clean win now he sent out a signal what what is what did he tell the muslim voters across the state about voting for or against anybody or allies with the bjp it's very clear the muslim voters are being told to vote tactically against the parties which are they believe harmful to the interests of the community so that signal has gone out very clearly out across the mosques in the in the in the uh, in the acam areas in the specific districts where the community is in a in a majority in the uh, in of course so he is told all the muslim voters across andhra that don't now vote for telugu desam bjp alliance vote for any candidate that is likely to beat them the congress has always been the natural party to which the muslims would have voted but now with the congress being wiped out in the simandra region the only other choice left with them would be the ysr congress so this time certainly the muslims are likely to give ysr congress one chance one must always so remember that why is the muslim voters have also benefited from many of those a uh, welfare schemes of wise rajshekhar reddy he right. brought in reservation for muslims as well he also he does enjoy goodwill so they would want to vote at least once for wise our congress so dora bhai i want to ask you when he tied up with the bjp the, uh, telugu desam tied up with the bjp chandra babu naidu he hoped from a modi boost but he was aware that he may lose the muslims so it was a trade off he actually admits that in an interview with us right so but i think the trade off probably is much larger than he thought mr modi is more acceptable as prime minister but whether bjp will get him votes is another question it's only been a very weak party in this part of the country so you know it looks from the figures now that visa with the last time that we did the poll the trade off is so far negative for him and not positive okay let's have a look at uh, what chandra babu naidu had to say we had a chat with him uh, just yesterday he's come back from the wilderness the comeback kid and he seemed pretty confident but did he take dorab cephological calculations into account here's what naidu mr naidu had to say now you finally tied up with modi and the bjp you yeah. said sometimes you will sometimes you won't now you've tied up is that going to benefit you how much and in which ways will it harm you positives and negatives no it is very clear for the last 10 years under congress rule country suffered very badly there is no leader prime minister manmohan singh is unable to give leadership so many corruption scandals modi has developed some model in gujarat so what i am thinking i am a development man modi is a development man we are working differently for the development so it is a deadly combination but you did have pretty big muslim vote base will you lose all that now that's the negative what i'm saying even modi is projecting himself he is for everybody in this great country we have to work for the welfare of all not one section but you will lose some muslim vote we will gain some muslim votes also 
what I am saying, some fanatics, they may not vote. At the end of the day, we will gain that vote also to convince by going on telling them, I am having a track record. One is, I am secular. From the beginning, I have done so many programs for Muslims. In Hyderabad, communal harmony, harmony we restored. So you are secular? 100% percent secular. BJP has never called you pseudo-secular? No, what I am saying, today you have to watch one thing, beauty of this. There is a vote for Modi. Mr. Naidu, despite your development record, you lost an election. People said you concentrated too much on Hyderabad and industry and the rural people did not vote for you. How do you propose to change now? When I took over as CM, our financial position was very bad. Then I thought how to create wealth, how to generate income. I, I started. Then I developed IT in a big way and I marketed all over the world. Within two, three years, I was uh, overcome all the problems. What I am saying, at that time, I had some problems, 2004. Not only development, I have developed, everybody aware, but I didn't spend all the money for the welfare. I thought the transition will take some more time. Congress exploited it and they misused. But are you like a split personality? In rural areas, you are populist. In urban areas, you are CEO. No, not necessary. Both are same. No, there you are saying loan waiver. No, what I am saying... Everybody here, no. you are saying be tough, be clear, be a CEO. There are more people in rural area which are all below poverty. I have to protect them. I have to promote them. For that, I have to create wealth. I have to earn money. Will Telangana, the breakup of the state into two parts, how has it affected your party and your no, prospects? Naturally, they created all problems in Telangana. Who's they? Both Congress and also TRS and also YSR Congress. They wanted to exploit. It has boomeranged. Now Congress is nowhere. Even TRS, even today, he started hatred campaign. He is saying, even Narendra Modi is enemy of Telangana. Chandra Babanaidu is the enemy of Telangana, which is not true. People in Andhra, Sri Andhra, are anti-Telangana, the breakup. And don't they say that Chandra Babu Naidu was never firmly against the breakup? He was both this way, that way. What no, was what, your real position? What, what I am saying, that was the perception, media, and even in Delhi, your media asked me, <laughs> are you foolish? Why you are not supporting Sri Andhra? You may not get any vote in Telangana. I told them very clearly, how can I lose Telangana? My cadre is there, my party is there, 30 years they support. Are you against the breakup or not against the breakup? What I am saying, sometimes some nature, some wishes. That now you are wish, talking like true politician. I cannot take sides. I can convince both the regions by doing right things for both the regions. That is what I am doing. I have done, it has paid, rich dividend for me, people are believing me only for that reason. If I support one reason, next day I will be out in that reason. No, I have to fight with the TRS in Telangana, I have to fight uh, with uh, YSR Congress in Samandra. That, that is a reality. No, a bit ahead. If your side were to win the Lok Sabha elections, last time you stayed out of government, would you do the same this time? This time we will think of everything positively. You could have ministers in the next government. Could let have. us see, let us see how things are going. You know, Andhra is this time the largest number of industrialists, richest can. Andhra is probably, you're talking of corruption, but the richest candidates in the I'm country saying, and Andhra. That is what All I'm, parties have given them tickets. Ticket, that is what I am saying. Change in type of politician. Po that, career politicians gone, businessmen have come in. Yeah, that is what I am saying. We are unable to contain, curb them. Only the way we have to go for electoral reforms. If you go for electoral reforms, money power will be totally controlled. That means you can do charity. You can do before elections, if you earn 1,000 crores, you want to spend 100 crores, you can spend. Nothing wrong in it. Elections, nobody should spend money. Do you think that will happen, Mr. Naidu? We have to do that. How other countries have done? There is a will. There is Corruption a way. Corruption is the key. But is there a will? Is there a will in the political class? I am confident. With Narendra Modi and people like me, if we join together, it is possible. That is our will. That is our wish. Just look how busy this place is on a Sunday night. It's just amazing. 
buzzing. This is the heart of not just Hyderabad, the heart of India and the heart of a very secular India here. Okay, now we looked at the votes, but let's see what the seat forecast now is for Andhra. This is the Andhra, 25 out of the 42 of the old Andhra Pradesh, which was Andhra plus Telangana. Out of the 25 seats, what is the current position? This is what it looks like. It's neck and neck. 12 seats for the TDP, Chandra Mahabu Naidu, and 12 seats for the YSRC, uh, Jagan Reddy. That's a gain of 8 for Chandra Mahabu Naidu and a gain of 12, obviously, for the YSRC because they are a new party. And the Congress down to just one seat. That's down 20 since the last time. Congress decimated. And let's, let's have a look at the trend over the last three months. Remember, we've been tracking this in February, March, first week of April. That was two weeks ago and now, second week of April. And look at how it's changed. YSR, Jagan Reddy won, was clearly in the lead with 15 seats earlier. Then he started losing a bit and, Ch and Chandra Babu Naidu started gaining. Then the first boost of the alliance with the BJP. But then the call went out that vote against anybody to the Muslims, to vote against anybody who allies with the BJP and is back to neck and neck. And we'll be tracking it again before the final uh, vote, which will be on the, this goes on the 7th. That's in another 10 days time. Uh, Telangana goes on the 30th, another three days time, but Andhra in another 10 days time. So Dora, this kind of trend, when you see it going up and down, it really shows campaigns matter. Yes, and uncertainty. You know, one is a new party contesting for the first time, the other is an alliance that changed. Mr. Naidu, from fighting by himself, suddenly takes a new ally. So the situation politically is very fluid, and I think both parties do have their strong support. It's the marginal voter who's moving up and down, making this difference. And Uma, you've been following Jagan Reddy for so many months, uh, watching him campaign, going through uh, the whole Andhra region, stopping. He's worked very, very hard after coming out of jail, right? He had a sympathy factor after coming out of jail because he had been projecting that the cases against him are politically motivated and he has been indulging in what we call a mass contact program. He has been doing campaigning ever since he came out of jail and even before that, in fact, after his father passed away and he stepped out of the Congress. He has been in, the, in doing these mass contact programs and he has been really appealing to that section of the people who have benefited from the uh, welfare programs that his father had launched and he is really projecting himself as his father's son. Very unfortunate situation in a sense for Chandra Babu Naidu. At one time he had only one enemy, the Congress. Now he is fighting YSR Congress also there and he is the Congress as well as the in the uh, Telangana region. So right. both these are important. You know, he's been so really tied up, Jagan Reddy. He's been just campaigning non-stop. Then he had a bit of a tragedy, a major tragedy. One of his uh, party members died in a car crash. But finally, we just caught up with him, uh, just, just about 20 minutes from here, about an hour ago. And uh, exhausted though he was, he answered a few questions that we asked him. Here's Jagan Reddy with the kind of frenzy around him and love and uh, emotion that I've never seen in a campaign. Jagan Reddy. Jagan Reddy, I've never seen such emotion in this, uh, in a campaign like this. This is real emotion that we've just experienced. And this is not your strongest area. Is it like even more than this in Simandra? <laughs> Quite true, this is a city, so obviously. Simandra is more. Uh, Simandra is more. Simandra is more. Uh, you know, how do you mean Rail Sima? It doesn't make a difference whether it's Rail Sima or Kostandra. It's everywhere. It's just one go. And you have been working. The state behaves in one particular way. Right. Whichever party is voted to power, it will be clean sweep, two thirds plus. It behaves like Tamil Nadu, whereas in Telangana it's always fractured. Like I've been telling uh, beforehand, I've been telling before, whichever party gets majority, 
I am pretty sure halfway mark will not come through in Telangana. This is Telangana people do not give a full mandate. Even in the peak of Telangana movement, TRS scored only 26 seats. Last time in 2009, they scored only 10 seats. If you were to see the data, my 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 numbers would be even even uh, a party with the single largest holding would probably be only 40 45 in Telangana. Whereas in whereas in Simandra it would be different. It would be clean sweep. This is the behavior of the state. Right. See, if, you to, if you were to see the background, yes. if you were to see uh, recall the last 30 years of the state's behavior. Right. Uh, they say in your in all your uh, rallies which you go through you're going you've been doing this now for how many months I've been doing it huh? I've been doing it for the past has the tied up tie between the two past four years the past four years we've been doing the same thing yes. and the and the old women in particular are very emotional about you right that's only because God is put in more affection in their hearts and I'm thankful to God for that and I'm thankful to the women folk for that. Has the tie-up with the BJP and the TDP helped you in terms of diverting the minority votes towards you? BJP, TDP, tie-up, even with the tie-up or without the tie-up, it makes no difference. Because BJP's presence, BJP and TDP together also will not make any impact when it comes to voting. Maybe a percentage or two, maybe an increase of percentage might take place. But when you see the, uh, the figure onto the, uh, onto the number of seats, it would translate into practically nothing. And I'm pretty sure in Simandra BJP will be zero. Congress would be zero. TDP would be around about 40 seats or so. Out of 175. I've noticed you are also a cephologist. You do the number, look at the numbers very closely. But more than that, this must be a very emotional time for you. Uh, Jagan Reddy, your father must come to your thoughts a lot. It is for my, because you know, everything today is because what he has done. I mean, his, his death, his demise, everything what he's done and today whatever he's done that has left so much of emotional bonding on onto me especially when it comes to people people own me as their own son their own grandson their own brother their own sister majorly because of what dad has done and of course i could give a hope to them that they've seen that and they would see better in me. If you were to win here decisively both in the Lok Sabha and the Vidhan Sabha and the center, the NDA needed your support, what would you do? Would you support them? We are not averse to supporting, uh, we are not averse to not supporting anybody. We are, our, our options are all open. Our options are also open with BJP also. We, have, we are not averse to anybody. Except for Congress party, our options are open with everybody. Are the way the bill has been, the way the bill has been, the way the bill has come out is mind-boggling. They have, they have. It's mind-boggling. In fact, they have an outgoing prime minister uh, reads out a letter in the parliament, and the contents of that letter are not even a part of the bill. They have. They have carved out a state. They have removed Hyderabad from the, uh, from the from Simanda region, and they have not even mentioned how much of money they are going to give to a new capital. And Hyderabad, being an engine of growth, with 75 percent of VAT coming in and 60 percent of revenues from the budget coming in, and once this engine of growth has been removed, what does the special status deliver? What are I mean, what are the benefits? What what it what it what, what it would imply onto the um, and what kind of financial support would come through? There is absolutely no clarity on anything. 
So it's practically, it's practically a situation where we would be supporting anybody who is in Delhi. The motion is amazing, yeah, amazing. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dorav, you saw the kinds of frenzy and emotion. Yes. We've seen lots of, you know, uh, road shows like this, but the kind of emotion... Also very, very young people. I think, you know, he's very strong among the youth. And he's also, being young, fairly fearless. He step out of the Jeep, you know, normally you get crushed on a ship, but he kept on getting out of the Jeep again and again, waving to people, hugging people. So he's really got a great connect with the youth. And Uma, this was in not his heartland, not in Simandra. This was here in, in and, and tremendous. When you traveled with him in Simandra, was there this kind of frenzy, kind of emotion? Very much so. In the Simandra region, in fact, one of the things that about Jagan Mohan Reddy is his campaign style has been very different from any other political leader that you would see because he would have road shows. He's not airdropping from elsewhere and doing his campaigning. He is on the road and he's in fact hanging out of the vehicle half right. of the time, That's touching people, doing, yeah. hugging people, kissing people. That person-to-person -person contact that he has established perhaps will convert into words. That's, that's what he hopefully, he believes that... And uh, older women uh, just want to just hold him and kiss him like they, he's their son or grandson. He would like to project himself as their son, grandson, uh, uh, the brother of those uh, women who are coming and hugging him. You must remember all this is backed by the fact that his father had so many welfare schemes that have benefited families, whether it was Arogya Shri so or the health insurance and others. Pensions and all pensions that. Pensions and loan. Okay, let's have a look at some of the characteristics of the voters that are voting for the TDP versus those that are voting for the YSRC. This is what it looks like. Let's have a look first at the educated versus the less literate. What's the party support amongst educated? The less literate are the emotional vote is going to YSRC, Jagan Reddy. It's 3% ahead of the TDP. And let's have a look at the class 10 and above. A little more educated are going for Chandra Babu Naidu. Now let's move on to the younger versus older. The first, the, uh, first time voter versus the others. What does it look like? First time voters going much more, a little more for YSRC, Jagan Reddy. And the rest slightly older voters like Dorab Supariwala voting for Chandra Babu Naidu but of course Dorab doesn't have a vote in this region and the first time voters like Uma going for Jagan Reddy and what about finally let's have a look at caste this is uh, Andhra Uma is a caste based vote in many ways but it's not as extreme as one thing look at the Kamma vote TDP 59% YSRC 27% and exactly the opposite for the Reddy vote. 62% for Jagan Reddy YSRC and 28% for the TDP. So Dorab, it's not 100-0, you know, it's not an on block. But you know, these parties, the TDP was formed as a party for the Kammas. So you're not surprised. The Reddies have always taken, Congress always taken the Reddy vote. So what is, all that has happened is the old Congress has vanished and the same distribution between taken place between the TDP and the YSRC. Okay. So it's just Congress is converted into YSRC. Okay. Uh, Uma, I want you to go through this next graphic with me. Let's have a look at, we asked the people of Andhra and the people of Telangana, we're going to move on uh, in the next half of the program about Telangana, but this is the transition. Who is the, which is the party responsible for the creation of Telangana? According to the Andhra voters, 38% said the TRS is responsible. The Telangana voters say 64% say the TRS is responsible. Now what about for the, uh, the Congress? The Andhra voters blame the Congress, the Seam Andhra or the Andhra Pradesh voters. 57% blame the Congress. But the Telangana voters say only 28% say the Congress is responsible. So the Telangana voters emotionally are actually tied to the TRS as the as the party that gave them their state and is that going to be reflected in term in the in translating to votes the Telangana Rashtra Samiti was a party that did not have a presence across the districts of Telangana in any case 
it's on, they are riding on this euphoria of a new state and that's the reason why they are hoping to make it despite the fact that in the last elections they had 10 assembly seats and two Lok Sabha seats. Imagine the party that had such a small presence and now it is hoping to have a presence across this new state of Telangana. But I also want to go back to this graphic on the cast that you mentioned. Right. The reason why Kama and the ready vote is important in the Simandra region, they comprise almost 30% of the population. The forward caste comprise 30% of the population and to the YSR Congress, while the ready vote is transferred, there is some reluctance there also because Jagan Mohan Reddy happens to be a ready Christian. He brings along with him the Christian vote of the Simandra community and there there is a hidden Christian vote also that I we are I want seeing. to get, learn, a, you've been talking about that, I want you to explain that. The census says the Christian vote is about one and a half, two percent. But there is this hidden Christian vote, explain that, which could be as high as 10 percent? It's actually estimated at 11 percent and more in the, in the coastal belt. These are Christian, Christians who have converted Christians, they could be Dalits, they could be Adivasis, so SCs, STs and the Christians as well and this is a huge chance. They are not recognized in the census because they do not get their benefits under the law if they are recognized as Christians. So they Dalit, don't declare themselves as Christians. They never declare themselves as Christians and that's the reason that could be a very, very critical factor that could determine why YSRC is where it is. Okay, that's fascinating actually that their alliance will still be with uh, YSR Ready and they're seen as 2% but they're actually 11%. Very, very important. Let's move on to the fascinating new state of Telangana. What's happening there? This is what the vote percentages suggest at the moment according to our opinion poll just done. Remember the voting here is still in three days time. The TRS uh, led by KCR is 32%. Coming up close second is the Congress or the UPA. 30%, just 2% behind. And the TDP plus BJP, not bad, Dora, but 23%. Well, you know, after all, BJP was an original supporter of Telangana, and TDP has a cadres there. Sort of strong party which has cadres there. Also, what's happened is that these two parties are pro Telangana, they have formed a poll. The BJP stands at the other end of the poll. So I think, you know, I, this is a fairly even reasonable distribution for the BJP. And let's see how this can translate into get seats. seats. Doesn't yeah. give enough seats. So 17 seats here. Remember, out of the 42 Andhra Pradesh, 25 to Andhra, Seem Andhra, and 17 here. And that's TRS 8, Congress 7, and the balance 1 for TDP plus BJP. And MIM, Mr. OAC seat right here. Dorab has done a huge survey of about five people and has come to the conclusion that, are you sure, what's the error, what's the standard error here? None. Zero standard Zero error. Standard. This is a very statistically uh, most unusual forecast. So MIM, 100% sure according to Dorab, is going to win this seat. Let's have a look at the trend over the last three months in, in Telangana. What does it look like? Here it is. Um, we started in February. TRS was right on top. Then the TRS and Congress came together. Congress started doing better during the campaign. The TDP and the BJP picked up to three. And the Congress and TRS sort of di di diverted a bit, eight to five. But the TDP has now gone down to just one. And the others are about 50, 50, eight, seven. So in the end, uh, crucial question, difficult to answer and we will be looking into this in our next forecast. The difference between assembly vote and Lok Sabha vote. This may be the Lok Sabha vote, but do you feel that this, there could be a split vote in, the, in both Telangana and Simandra because one thing is a national party, the other thing is who do you want to run your state? We are looking at a very critical stage in the history of Andhra Pradesh and in the history of yes. Telangana. We are see, looking at a, at a time when two new states are going to be formed and both have huge aspirations. The, one, the Simandra has to, has to create a new capital and the Telangana region has to develop as a new state and huge backward areas there. And that's the reason why they would want a friendly government at the centre. That's perhaps one reason why the Congress has not been able to, uh, because of the, the perception in the country is that Congress is perhaps not going to form the next government at the centre. And that's one reason why if the TRS forms the government, it is quite likely that they will align with the BJP at the center. That's one of the perceptions, certainly. It does look like even in the assembly... Uh, but interestingly, 
on in Simandra, both sides are ready to ally with the BJP. But here, TRS will ally, no problem for it. TRS has, uh, has said that they would like a Congress government at the centre or a third front at the centre, but that's that's not something that perhaps is going to happen from well, what we see. The first let's thing. hear what the man of the moment, Mr. K. Chandrasekhar Rao, head of the TRS, had to say to us when we asked him this and other questions. KCR. <laughs> So, sir, you must be a very satisfied man. You've created Telangana. Your name is forever in history. Thank is you. it the end of the road or the beginning of the road for you? It's two way, Pranay <laughs> because. <laughs> I'm a, I feel I'm a blessed man yes. that I could accomplish my moment yes. in, my, in my lifetime. Huge. I've touched the goal. I'm a very satisfied, very happy man. Now we, I need to take out my society from the trauma. But you know, over the years, Telangana has been a relatively backward path. Will not, will not require a lot of resources to bring it up to a... And where will those resources come from? Sir, as a matter of fact, as, if you look at the history, sir, while merging these two states, Telangana was a rich state. Telangana was always with a surplus budget and Andhra was a deficit budget. It's not that Telangana was backward, sir. Telangana was pushed into backwardness. It was pushed. So now I think we have sufficient resource. There are a lot of people from Andhra who still live in Telangana and Hyderabad and some of the areas around it. They are, they are feeling very insecure. Because you're quite aggressive towards them. What is it? Is that aggression going to continue or is that roll over? Pranayji, I'm very clear in my mind. I'm a progressive thinker. I want Telangana should flourish. Telangana should develop. So I am not against Andhras. I'm not against the people of Andhra. My slogan has been always, Jo khana kamane ke liye yaha aya, unse amara koi jang nahi hai. So it's very clear to me that it's only your first innings that's over, Telangana. You're already ready for the second innings. Yes, sir. So in the second innings, there are two aspects. There's both assembly and Lok Sabha going on. In the Lok Sabha, it's Mr. Modi and versus Rahul Gandhi. How do you compare the two? See, comparing, comparing these two... I mean, what two, do you think of them? The best thing is not to compare these two. Yes. Separately. It's always equation and situation which really works out in politics. The present equation and situation out of my experience, my little experience, is neither it is going to be Rahul Gandhi nor it is going to be Narendra Modi. It is going to be some other face represented by third front kind of situation. So what do you think of them as two leaders? Of course, they are leaders of their own party. Hmm. Why should I comment anything against them or for them? But one of the parties is actually close to tying up with you. What happened? You were close to tying up with the Congress and then suddenly you're fighting separately. What happened? Yes, it was. It was. But the, I can suddenly say the approach, arrogant approach of Congress, erratic approach of the second rung leaders of All India Congress Committee has really... Second rung leaders, you, you had already met Sonia Gandhi. Things seem to have worked no, out. I met, I met Mr. Digvijay Singh. Mr. Jairam Ramesh, I met him. Jairam Ramesh came to my residence in Delhi. So many others also met me. So then what went wrong? Me. I don't know what happened. The day I came from Delhi, next day to my surprise, I see in the newspapers, he spoke so, so much against me. Who? Mr. Jairam Ramesh. Here people have no faith in Congress. The same old kind of thing they are following Congress. People want a change here. So why did you even engage? One thing is for sure, I can certainly say it, because I can't lie to anybody. I have some good regards for Sonia Gandhi. Definitely, I have to say that. Because of her initiative, only Telangana became possible. I am openly saying it. She was the main reason behind the formation of Telangana. But the second rank leaders after, after Sonia Gandhi, they played the spoil sport. 
When you talk about Sonia Gandhi, you almost get emotional. Certainly. She, she is the reason behind it. Because I cannot lie to my own conscience. So when Mr. Modi, what's his impact been here in his speeches here in Hyderabad, in Telangana? Sir, I can tell you the tragedy of Mr. Narendra Modi in Telangana. Um, it is to the misfortune of Mr. Narendra Modi. He played into the hands of very wrong people. Into the trap of Mr. Benkei Naidu and Chandra Babu Naidu. You feel he hasn't got the pulse of Telangana? I, I don't know, sir, but why, why he spoiled himself, why he killed himself in Telangana, he must only know. And Rahul, has he got the pulse of Telangana? Rahul is, of course, to, still to yet to mature. He cannot be compared to Sonia Ji. And who, so in your campaign, who's your main political opponent, party-wise? No, finally, the fight will be in between TRS and Congress. Only. Congress. So if Mr. Modi asks you, please come and support us at the center. We won't support. No question. No question. I, I may tell you, at the end of this, I may tell you one thing. The glory, the glorious history of my Telangana. Telangana is famously known to the whole world for its Ganga Jamuna Tehzi. Ganga Jamuna Tehzi. Ganga Jamuna ka jo sangam hota hai. Jiya. Us prakar ka yaan Hindu, Muslim milke rehne ka. Just like you said no to Mr. Modi, if Rahul has a, needs your support to form a government, would you say okay to Rahul Gandhi? 100%. If he, if he becomes Prime Minister with my support, 100% I'll be the first person to support. So it's quite tough. On the ground, your main opponent is the Congress, but actually there is an underlying alliance also. It's a critical situation. What should I do? Yes. It's the Congress who will ask the whole That's thing. politics. That's politics. I can't <laughs> help it. It's the Congress who, really, who played the spoil sport. So thank you so much. Thank you and thank you. good luck, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The on-the-ground hero of Telangana, the man who created Telangana. But there's also Sonia Gandhi who has got a lot of sympathy here for actually being instrumental in saying, go ahead with Telangana. And let's see how the men-women voters stack up against the party. It's fascinating. Once again, the UPA, the Congress, way ahead amongst women. Uh, look at the TRS. 32% men, uh, UPA 26% men and TDP 26% men. But look at the women. TRS about same strength, men and women, 32-31. But the UPA, that's the Congress, 26% of the voters are men. Of, men vote for them, but 36% of women vote for them. A 10% difference. And by the way, for the TDP, BJP, much stronger support amongst men than women. But the UPA, strong amongst women, and that originates with the sympathy and the fondness for Sonia Gandhi. So we caught up with the Congress party here, Mr. Digvijay Singh, Jai Ram Ramesh and the PCC chief, Mr. Lakshmaya. Let's see what they had to say. So you are the man on the spot, campaigning, working hard. Do you feel you should have tied up with KCR and then you would have both swept the state? I don't think it was necessary at all. The Congress party is strong right from the grassroots level. The history of Telangana people, they always supported Congress in the last 50-55 years. And today, the Congress has given a separate state and the bill is passed. So there is no reason otherwise to think, yeah, but no matter you, how if much. If you look at the whole state of 42 seats, this was your crowning glory. Was something done not so well in dividing the state that in the northern, in the southern part of the state, you seem to be struggling? No, no, I think um, the fact of the matter is that whatever we did uh, would have had a negative effect in Simandra uh, because this was an unpopular decision in Simandra. But even in Simandra, let me tell you, I have traveled extensively. Uh, there are very strong pockets where we are expecting to do very well. Uh, Telangana, of course, we will, I'm sure, form the government. Looking back, you're in charge of the whole area now. What could you have done differently? Because you've lost, this was your big, big state. This was Congress's bastion and meant a lot in your overall tally. It's been a, it's an uphill, uphill task this time. What could you have done differently? You lost Jagan, you've lost KCR. Is Congress not good at holding on to allies, making friends, making, what could you have done differently? 
Well, as far as KCR is concerned, he was uh, not consistent and uh, was not an uh, R ally in 2009. As far as Jagan is concerned, I think uh, there were issues beyond the control of the party. Uh, there were uh, court orders. The court orders uh, ordered investigation. And, you know, uh, Congress party has been sensitive on, on the issue of corruption. The Congress party itself had committed for the separate state of Telangana. We've been charged that we took the decision to bifurcate the state for political gains, which is not correct because we knew well in advance that any decision to bifurcate the state will have very, very serious repercussions in Simandra. But then there's something called commitment uh, to the people of Telangana. When we spoke to KCR, he said still has great regard for Sonia Gandhi. He wanted to tie up, but Jairam Ramesh attacked me like anything. He and said. Dikujay Singh. Huh? Didn't he mention he, Dikujay Singh? No, 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 he was very nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, you always somehow managed to. <laughs> He's so a good I'm guy. I'm a bad guy. Yes. <laughs> What happened actually? I don't think he was ever serious. 2004, he was our ally. 2009, he deserted us. He's been consistent in his inconsistency. He is to blame for KCR. Are you to blame for Jagan going away? Because you actually broke away from Jagan before the cases were against him. It happened no, much I, earlier. No, not I, that he is to blame, I'm just saying. When you are talking of persons, <laughs> I was not in charge of Andhra Pradesh okay, when, so Jagan not when Jagan broke out, number one. Number two. Shouldn't you have made him chief minister and held on to him? I was not in charge of Andhra Pradesh. If you I had was, been? I was not handling because. Would you that, have done that's, it if that's, you that's, had? that's too hypothetical. Just coming to the national picture because you are both deeply involved in that also. Say you came close to forming uh, government. Would you take Jagan's support? Would you take KCR's support? No, no, no. It's too early to say. That's not too early. Because if you go by your. But they are not untouchable. If, if you go by your uh, predictions. They won't need us. Never go by our predictions. That's the last thing you should do. So, uh, overall, though, in the position in the country, and I'd like to ask you also, um, maybe our polls are wrong, but do you feel uh, you're, it's like India shining again that actually you could win and overtake, or do you think you are a little bit behind? I can't say at the moment uh, <clears throat> because, uh, you know, uh, two states, because of Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu, uh, we have a problem. Uh, and uh, instead for Karnataka, we don't have any major gains. Yes. So uh, it's very diff really difficult to say at the moment. <clears throat> but then I don't uh, accept the pr the projections which uh, are being given for some, BJP. Some wild people make. No, no, no. I don't. I don't <laughs> call them wild. But but at the same time, I was uh, I was asking someone, I was telling someone, but probably 16th of May, I think uh, the polls will give 543 seats to BJP. Is Congress bad at forming alliances no. and holding alliance on to alliances? Never be, alliance can never be a long-term strategy for a national party like the Congress. But in the long alliance run, can only be is only be a short-term, uh, you know, coming to power strategy. Carry on something which Jairam said. Ten years in power. They are anti-incumbency all over the world. It's not just here. It is the worst election to fight. So for Rahul Gandhi, the timing is very difficult. His biggest decision at the worst time. Everything stacked against him. Should he have ducked this election and tried the next one? No, no, luck favors the brave. I think, uh, why should anyone hide? Because the strategy, going, going, but just but strategy. Okay. When the going is tough, it's tough, it's supposed to be. So I think, uh, in fact, it, uh, it's a right opportunity for Mr. Rahul Gandhi to face the anti-incumbency for 10 years and then face the consequences also. Finally, on the ground here in Telangana, tell us the impact of Narendra Modi versus Rahul Gandhi. So, people in Telangana, they don't take Narendra Modi serious. Is an individual based and high peace creator. Whereas uh, they look at uh, Rahul Gandhi as a uh, young, dynamic, and shaping the 
programs and fine tuning the programs of the campus. Young like you, 17 years old. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have. Uh, unfortunately, Dorab is losing concentration because he keeps looking around, thinking about his biryani is about to happen. But before we do that, let's look at what Mus the Muslim vote in Telangana. How is that being split? Because that's key to who's going to win. Here it is. The TRS is getting 30 percent of the vote. The Muslims form 13% of the overall voter population. The UPA, the Congress, almost 60%, 59% of the Muslim vote. And of course, TDP, BJP, 11, which may go down as time goes on because Mr. Asad Uwaisi has again said to everybody in Telangana, vote for either the UPA or TRS, vote tactically, whoever can beat the BJP. So we had a chat with Mr. Uwaisi on his roadshow. Uh, let's see what he had to say. Last uh, 10 days, the politics of Andhra have changed fairly dramatically. Definitely, things have changed. There, there, there were many uh, minority leaders from uh, both Muslim and Christian community have left. In fact, they're. Uh, Shukriya. Chalo, bas, 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 bas. Chalo, bas, bas. Jao, jao, jao. Chalo, tum lap. Chalo, jao, 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 they have left uh, TDP and there are many secular leaders who have, have left TDP. So it has uh, really hurt TDP uh, in Telangana and in Simandra as well. So say in Simandra, if they moved away from... Go ahead. Yeah. If they moved away from uh, the TDP, where will the Muslim vote go now in Andhra? and in Telangana separately? Telangana, uh, it will definitely go to a secular party. And also, it will also depend on the candidate who's there. So secular meaning either TRS or Congress? Either TRS or Congress and... So it could get split then? It, I don't think it will slip. Uh, it will uh, split over there. They, they will vote en bloc for a candidate who's going to win elections. And if, if it is sitting MP, his performance vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Muslim community will also be a very big factor in deciding uh, whether they'll vote for him or not. Right. And in Andhra, same Andhra? Andhra, because now there's no choice, it's only uh, Jagan is there. So that, that is why Jagan uh, is going to get a massive chunk of uh, Muslims and Christians and Dalit votes. Right, and that, that switch will have happened from being split to consolidating around him the Muslim vote in the last 10-15 days when it became clear. Exactly. After, after uh, uh, the official announcement was made and then Naidu sharing a, a, a public platform with Modi in Hyderabad, that has really, uh, uh, you know, given a strong message to the, to the Muslims and Christians and Dalits that uh, Naidu is not an option for them now. What about the prospects for your party in Hyderabad and in the nearby regions of Telangana, in the assembly as well as the Lok Sabha? Assembly, the prospects are very good. Lok Sabha, we are concentrating on, on retaining Hyderabad. Secunderabad also we are trying. But as far as the assembly constituencies are concerned, I feel that uh, the, uh, number one priority is to retain those seven segments. And in, in uh, Rajendranagar, Jubli Hill and Nizambad, we have a very good chance of winning those seats, so we are, we are focusing on, on this 10-11 assembly seats. I just wanted to ask you about the Modi impact. He's reaching out, he says, I'll reach out to all Indians, including Muslims, etc. So is Modi going to change? I don't think so. Modi is ever going to change. The man, according to Dorab Supariwala, is fighting the safest seat in India. But Dorab, overall, what is this? This is a, for me a fascinating election. The politics, the cephalogy, one state divided into two. The, how the important first, is it? The first time you see a state divided into two acrimoniously. You had Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, Uttarakhand and UP. This is the one where two new parties are being formed. Right. So you know it's a completely new ball game in this part of the world. And acrimonious leadership level and at and the voter level. level. Yeah, every level. It's yeah. just completely changed. Historical record, the Congress, the dominant party here, seems to be lost. So, Uma, you've got caste, you've got religion, you've got now this new animosity, the Telangana versus Simandra population. What's the future for these two states? They've got, uh, they've got to build, they've got to build these two states as to do something for the people. 
huge dream certainly riding on the Telangana dream here. State was born because of the pressure aspirations of the people. So the governments that are coming, going to come here, are going to be under tremendous pressure to perform. People really want a clear mandate. They don't want a fractured mandate so that the governments that perform here are able to deliver the promises of the people. And on the other side, you are seeing a state that's been deprived of a Hyderabad, huge revenue and they need to build a new capital now. It's almost like starting from scratch. So they also want a clear mandate first of all and also perhaps a friendly government at the same time. And deprived the of a Congress party that's ruled it for almost 50 of the 70 years, 60 of the 70 years. Yes, the irony, the irony Major perhaps, change, major change ahead. In the Simandra region, Congress is wiped out, but perhaps if the BJP is going to form the government at the centre, both the, both the parties, whether it is the TDP or whether it is the we'll Jagan Mohan Reddy party, will ally. Right. Fascinating election. I hope you've enjoyed the ins and outs of the Telangana and the Simandra uh, 2014 election. Now, it's off for some fantastic biryani. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye. I vote for biryani.